Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Josh and you're watching Our History. Today we're going over the life of Maria van Riebeek, the wife of Jan van Riebeek, the Dutch colonial administrator and first commander of the Cape Colony. So if you enjoy this, please be sure to like and if you're new here, consider smashing the subscribe button. If this isn't your first radio and you haven't shown some love to the subscribe, now is your opportunity. Thank you for watching. Maria van Riebeek also known as Maria de Equillerie, which was her maiden name, was a French Huguenot born on the 28th of October 1629. She is best known as the first wife of Jan van Riebeek, the Dutch colonial administrator and first commander of the Cape Colony. Maria played a significant role in the early establishment of the settlement at the Cape of Good Hope. She arrived with her husband in 1652 and despite facing numerous challenges, contributed to the development of the colony. Sadly, Maria passed away on November the 2nd, 1664, leaving behind a lasting legacy in the history of the Cape Colony. Life. Maria, the daughter of Abraham de la Quillerie and Maria Dubois, was born in Tournai, Belgium, in the 16th century. Her grandfather, Chrétien de Quillerie, hailed from the boulogne sur mer region and had a rich history as a nobleman, pastor, and military chaplain. Her family hailed from a French Huguenot family, a group of Protestant refugees who sought religious freedom. Her family's migration to the Dutch Republic was emblematic of the widespread religious persecutions that marked the period and meant the family was fluent in French and Dutch. Maria's childhood was spent in Leiden, where she likely acquired knowledge and cultural exposure. While specific details about Maria's life are limited, her upbringing in a diverse linguistic and cultural environment likely had a profound impact on her development and shaped her worldview. Maria married van Riebeek on the 28th of March 1649 in Schiedam, Netherlands. Their marriage resulted in the birth of eight children, unfortunately most of whom died at a young age. In 1652, the couple embarked on a journey and arrived in Cape Town, South Africa. This marked the beginning of their significant role in establishing a Dutch colony in the region. Her background as a Huguenot is significant in understanding her adaptability and determination, as these qualities would become vital in the pioneering days of the Cape Colony. During the first period of their stay in South Africa, Maria and Jan van Riebeek resided in a tent. Maria filled the role of a hostess, graciously welcoming and entertaining guests. She was known to showcase her musical talents on the clavichord and was admired for her diplomatic skills when interacting with foreigners. Additionally, Maria played a crucial role as a money lender to the colonists from 1658 onwards. To effectively communicate with the native population, she employed a slave girl as an interpreter. Her interactions with the indigenous Khoi Khoi people and her efforts to forge peaceful relations with them were notable. Her role in fostering goodwill and cooperation between the Dutch settlers and the indigenous populations played a critical part in the early survival and success of the colony. Her ability to communicate and engage with the Khoi Khoi and later other indigenous groups helped establish a foundation for trade and cooperation, which was essential for the colony's economic stability. In an era marked by exploration, colonization, and religious diversity, Maria's life as a Huguenot immigrant to the Dutch Republic offers a glimpse into the complex dynamics of the 17th century. Her family's experiences mirror the broader historical narrative of migration, religious freedom, and the quest for a better life, all of which played a role in shaping her journey and the legacy she would leave in the Cape of Good Hope. In the year 1660, 1660 to 1661, French priest Nicolas Etienne resided in Cape Town for 10 months following a shipwreck. In a letter penned by Etienne, he characterizes Maria as a devout individual aligned with the Protestant faith. He further describes her as possessing diplomatic skills and exceptional intelligence. Although limited in detail, these accounts shed light on Maria's religious devotion and suggest the presence of qualities such as diplomacy and intellect, making her an intriguing historical figure. Maria van Rib passed away in Dutch Malacca on the 2nd of November 1664 at the age of 35. The exact cause of her death remains undisclosed. Legacy Maria van Riebeek, who is often regarded as the 
ancestral mother of the white Afrikaners holds significant historical importance in South Africa. To honor her memory, the South African Navy submarine, the SAS Maria van Riebeck, was named after her. Additionally, a commemorative plaque dedicated to her can be found in the ruins of St. Paul's Church in Malacca. It is worth noting that the original tombstone of Maria van Riebeck was transported to Cape Town in 1915. The statue of Maria van Riebeck is located in a square in Cape Town, South Africa. It was given to the city in 1952 by the Dutch state to commemorate the 300th anniversary of Jan van Riebeck's arrival at the Cape of Good Hope. The sculptor Dirk Wolbers created the statue based on his own wife as there is no definitive image of Maria available. Prince Bernard of the Netherlands unveiled the statue on October the 2nd, 1954. However, Queen Juliana did not attend the ceremony due to her opposition to apartheid, which was in effect in South Africa since 1948. The statue was initially placed in the garden of the National Art Museum in Cape Town. If you made it this far, I hope you're really enjoying this channel. And if you'd like to support the creation of more content like this, because all contributions are greatly appreciated, consider joining the channel in the membership tab or check out the Patreon link in the description below.